Welcome, everyone. I'm so glad to see so many of you here this afternoon. We're here for another Make Music Connect session today or this afternoon. This jazz reading session will be presented by Michael Kamath. And do, we have just a few housekeeping things to uh, do before we get started and um, get to the uh, fun part of listening to all these great charts Mike selected for us. So we encourage you to download the Whova app where you can access all of our event content easily from your phone and uh, check out the links in the chat to find out more about how to download. We invite you to check out the smart music playlist that has been created for this reading session. The link to that playlist is in the chat. All live sessions today will be recorded and will be available on Whova within the next week. They will be available exclusively to you until the end of July. We've provided a downloadable certificate of attendance linked in the description for each live session today. We have also included a link to this session certificate in the chat. If you have a question that we are unable to answer during the session time, we encourage you to join a community board where your question will be answered. And at this time, I would now like to introduce our presenter for today, Mr. Mike Kamath. Hi, everyone. So Mike uh, enjoys a multifaceted career as an active educator, composer, arranger, and performer. Mike has taught uh, instrumental music for Montgomery Public Schools since 1992. He has been in his current teaching position since 1995 as the director of bands and orchestras and music department chairperson at John T. Baker Middle School. He has been a jazz faculty member at Youngstown State University and Montgomery College. Michael has served on the faculty, the Maryland Summer Jazz Consortium for over 25 years. He's presented music education workshops for teachers at numerous state professional development conferences, as well as the Midwest Clinic and the Jazz Education Network Conference. Michael's compositions and arrangements have been performed by numerous jazz artists and ensembles, including the Woody Herman and Glenn Miller Orchestras, the United States Air Force Airmen of Note, the U.S. Navy Commodores, James Moody, Eddie Daniels, Sean Jones, Terrell Staffords, Bill Watchers, and Nick Brignolia, to name a few. Ladies and gentlemen, I'm so happy to present to you Mr. Mike Kamath. Thanks, Ted, and welcome, everybody. Uh, this session, we're going to focus on uh, several titles that are uh, in smart music that are outstanding jazz ensemble uh, publications from various publishers, and we're going to just jump in and get started. This first one is uh, written at the uh, grade 0.5 to grade 1 level, and it's Drama for Your Mama by Victor Lopez. It's in Belwin's beginning, I'm sorry, Jazz Beginning series, and it's orchestrated for four saxophones, two trumpets, two trombones, guitar, piano, bass, drums. However, it functions with just three saxophones, alto, alto, tenor, one trumpet, one trombone, piano, bass, drums. There are also optional color instrument parts for two flutes, two clarinets, a berry sax and a tuba part that double the bass line of the tune, and horn and, and baritone horn parts uh, that double the trombone one part. This is a driving rock groove and it's a great way to introduce uh, jazz articulations to young students, particularly tenuto and capped accents. The solo section in this tune has uh, all wind parts uh, cued with a guide solo. However, it's a 16 bar form and it uses uh, three chords. Uh, it's in the key of F, so it uses F7, B flat 7, and C7. And it's an easy one to get students improvising on because you can take the, those scales and break it down pretty easily for for students or even just have a blue scale played over 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 the entire form and uh the the, the rhythm section parts are very repetitive uh which are going to build confidence in your young players and i think this is a great one for young students to to dig their teeth into here's drama for your mama by victor lopez
the pentatonic nature of that melody is going to be a hit with the kids because they're going to be able to sink their teeth into that. That's a great chart by Victor Lopez, Drama for Your Mama. This next tune is uh, written by Dean Sorensen, a great uh, trombonist, educator, and jazz pedagogue. And this is part of Chose's Flex Jazz Series, the Neil A. Chose uh, company. And this is a unique series because uh, the, the mel melodic instruments are written in four parts, just part one, part two, part three, part four. And part one instruments uh, uh, that have the option of playing the, those parts are trumpet and clarinet, alto, flute, and mallets. Uh, part two is written for trumpet and clarinet and also alto and tenor saxophone. Part three is written for uh, tenor sax, baritone horn, trombone, and French horn. And part four is written for barry sax uh, and trombone. And there's guitar, or there's also a separate tuba part, and there's a full rhythm section, guitar, piano, bass, drums. So there's a lot of flexibility with this series, no matter what your instrumentation is in your ensemble, your, your students can will be able to play this uh, this this wonderful arrangement of Dean's. So this is a this is called Alligator Alley, and it's a New Orleans shuffle, or it's often referred to as a second line groove. Um, uh, and this is another great one to introduce and reinforce all these great jazz articulations to, to young students in a setting where uh, they're going to really enjoy it and it's very, very playable by young musicians. The melody is basically a 24 bar blues. The solo section, though, is just a B flat major seven, or I'm sorry, B flat seven vamp, rather. Uh, so you can students can sink their teeth into this right away and improvising either using a you know a minor a minor pentatonic scale a mixolydian scale a blues scale they can give them just one device and go and this is a great one there are suggested solos provided for all instruments this is a great resource and a great a great chart for your young students here is alligator alley by dean Sorensen. That's a, that, that would be a lot of fun to play with students, and that, that's a great chart by Dean Sorensen, Alligator Alley. Next up is a uh, work song. This is a great tune composed by uh, jazz trumpet great Nat Adderley, uh, and it's arranged by Terry White. This is part of Belwin's first year chart uh, charts series, the red cover for Belwin. Uh, this is written for five saxophones. Uh, three trumpets, three trombones, guitar, piano, bass, drums, but it's playable uh, by uh, alto, alto, tenor, th so three saxophones, two trumpets, one trombone, piano, bass, drums. There are also color instrument parts for flute, tuba, horn, uh, also uh, uh, baritone horn, and uh, uh, I think that's it. And then this also features alto one and trumpet one playing the melody of the tune at the beginning. This is is hip but playable uh, in its in its harmonic content of, of the tune. Terry takes it in, in a couple new uh, in some new directions as they're going along. So the solo section is 16 bars. It's written uh, out out solos for the alto one part and uh, trumpet one part. Uh, and again, this uses a very limited harmonic palette. So this is a great one to get students improvising on. Uh, uh, there's we're not going to get to it in this session, but there's a very hip development section after the solo section. Uh, and it's, this is a great one to uh, 
bring kids around to and get them involved in listening to the original recordings. Cannonball Adderley, great alto saxophonist, recorded this many times as the, the composer and Nat, both together in the quintet and separately. And this is a great tune to get kids hooked on just uh, as far as uh, jazz, classic jazz literature goes. So here's Terry White's awesome arrangement of work song. Right. Wonderful writing by Terry there. And you can see see that the guide solo there, the player really did follow the guide solo. Sometimes that doesn't happen when when uh, when uh, these arrangements get recorded. But that that's a, a great one uh, to also share with students and take a look at that solo because the player embellished it a, a few times there. And so that's a great way to get the students kind of thinking off the page and more improvising just with this was simply embellishing the printed solo. So that's a great arrangement. And it's a great example of a, a, a great uh, guide solo there in the, in the music. Moving on this, our next tune is That's How We Roll by Greg Yazanitsky. This is in Kendor's Jazz Gateway series. It's written for uh, standard instruments, five, four, four, and, and the horn section, guitar, piano, bass, drums. Uh, it's a medium swing tune, uh, in, and it's a blues and F. This is probably, in, it, I'd say this is like an a, a easy grade one, maybe a more difficult grade 1.5 chart. It's a riff-like blues, meaning it's short little melodies that get passed back and forth between uh, the sections. Uh, after the introduction and, and melody, there's a really cool a cappella chorus, meaning no rhythm section. And then um, let's see, what else do I have here? The section, uh, the solo section leads, uh, I, don't, I can't even remember what I wrote here. I don't understand what I wrote. It has alto and trumpet solos. Uh, and then there's a great loud, a soft and loud shout choruses on the end of the, on the piece after the solo section, which we're not going to get to, but it's definitely worth checking out. So this is Greg Yazanitsky's rock and blues tune entitled That's How We Roll. Ted, we don't have your audio. Thank you. 
And there's an example of a guide solo not being played. So you can see on some of these uh, publisher recordings, sometimes they, they follow it, sometimes they don't, sometimes they embellish it, sometimes they just play whatever they want. That's a, it was a great alto saxophone solo, but that was not what was on the page there as a guide for your students. So but that's okay, and that's they need to hear that. You're moving on, next is Act Your Age by Gordon Goodwin. And this, this arrangement was actually uh, written by Peter Blair, um, I think we might have the wrong one up, Ted. Uh oh. Oh, we better skip this one, because this is not the this is not the one that we had. Oh, that's the one that came up. Sorry. <laughs> okay, no, that's okay. That's so. There, I'll talk. I'll address the chart. So there is um, actually actually play a little bit of this, and then I'll I'll explain to everybody what we're hearing here. And not in the middle school, there's wheelhouse. <laughs> well, this is a uh, this is a great piece by Gordon Goodwin, and it's part of his big fat band library. It was recorded uh, in, in the early two thousands on on Acure Age, the the, the, the uh, corresponding. Uh, uh, title to the, the one of his records and um there it is so here's here is um let's we're going to pull this one up and i'll talk about this so this is this parallels gordon's chart uh, but it's written at the grade two level and it's arranged by peter blair and this is uh in the bell one young jazz ensemble series so it's written for five saxophones four trumpets four trombones guitar piano bass drums uh, and, but it's playable by four saxophones, three trumpets, two trombones, piano, bass, drums. There are optional parts for flute, tuba, horn, uh, bar and baritone horn parts, doubling the tenor saxophone parts. It's a funky rock groove. The tune hangs right there in C minor uh, for quite a bit. Um, it's got some great hooks. And Peter Blair, as you're going to hear, he keeps uh, he keeps a lot of those ideas uh, in the tune and very playable for uh, for young musicians. Um, he keeps that character at, from the pro level chart in this edition. And uh, the alto one and alto, I'm sorry, alto one and trumpet one are featured in eight bar solos later on in the chart. We're not going to quite get that far, but uh, you're going to dig this. This is, I've done this with my students a, a couple of times over the years, and they love this chart. This is Act Your Age.
so it's a driving tune uh, lots of great independent lines uh and and uh but very playable by young musicians like i said peter blair did a great job of, of bringing that into the the, the uh the wheelhouse of young musicians and, and keeping that that flavor of the original. Next up is an arrangement of mine. Uh, this is also in the Belwyn Young Jazz Ensemble series. So the specs that I just talked about, 544, but optional 432, and the, and the uh, meaning four saxophones, three trumpets, two trombones um, for, for reduced instrumentation. Um, and this is an iconic blues tune written by Oliver Nelson. Um, and I tried to retain a lot of the flavor of his original four horn uh, version of this uh, from the album entitled Blues and the Abstract Truth and uh, and try to embellish it slightly. Um, you're going to hear, um, uh, you know, like I said, a small group at the beginning play the first statement of the theme followed by the saxophone section playing the, the, the second statement of the melody. Solo section has spots for alto one and trumpet two, but uh, again, this could be easily opened up for other musicians as well. And this, like like Greg Gazanitsky's That's How We Roll that we listened to earlier, uh, it has a soft and shout, uh, soft and loud shout chorus at the end. Um, and we're not gonna get to that. We're just gonna get through the solo section, but it's, it's a very similar setup to that arrangement. Here's my arrangement of Oliver Nelson's tune, Stolen Moments. All right, that's my arrangement of Stolen Moments in the Belwyn uh, Young Jazz Ensemble series. And from that same series is our next title. Uh, this is a composition by Chris Berg, uh, the, the man responsible for the chicken arrangement that's uh, so popular uh, amongst school jazz ensembles and students, and rightfully so. It's a great arrangement and a great tune. And Chris, this is another part of his chicken theme series. <laughs> that he does so well at and of course it's a rock tune uh a rock feel rather uh this is really creative writing here for this grade level by the way this this tune and and stolen moments are uh, we i would say grade two and a half um and the tune that was before that 
uh, actor age that Gordon Goodwin to, and I would say that that's a grade two in uh, in this this series. This uh, this chart starts with an a cappella uh, horn section uh, intro. It's got a funky melody that's kind of, the the form is kind of like an F blues variant. Um, first alto, um, or I'm sorry, the first solo can be any saxophone solo, and guide solos are provided. After the saxophone section, there's a drum uh, chorus and uh, that where the solo uh, player is soloing in between figures. The second solo section is for any brass instrument. Um, the recap of the tune has uh, added guitar with distortion pedals, so it's pretty cool. Kids will get into that. Um, and uh, the, the, the base, we're not going to get to the end of the chart, but the, the, the material that you're hearing at the beginning is the cap on the end of the chart, too. So this is a great chart by my friend Chris Berg. We hope you enjoy this. No harm, no foul. All right, so that's No Harm, No Foul by Chris Berg. Great funk tune, uh, and that would be a lot of fun to play uh, with, with your ensemble. Next up is uh, an arrangement by uh, the, the, the Dean of Writers, Mr. Mark Taylor, um, and this is from the Hal Leonard Young Jazz Classics series. It's written for the standard jazz band instrumentation, 544 in the, in the uh, saxes, trumpets, trombones. Guitar, piano, bass, drums, and vibes in this particular tune, and we're going to stream the vibes part for you. Um, the introduction is a drum feature uh, with uh, on brushes. Uh, there's a small group stating the melody that includes tenor one, trumpet two, and vibes. Uh, they state the theme. Uh, trumpet one. I'm sorry. I think trumpet one has the the the. Uh, has the, has the material in the, the small group. Trumpet one also has a guide solo for half a chorus of the tune, as does tenor saxophone one. There's a really nice ensemble section following the solo section on this where, with a lot of block writing, almost bassy, Count Basie type style writing. Uh, and note that the second trumpet pl part plays the lead part in this uh, quite some time because the first player is the soloist and is written uh, as the, the lead line in the solis. Great chart by Mark Taylor. Here is Afternoon in Paris. Thank you. 
All right, and the like I said, the solo section continues with a half a chorus to tenor and into a really outstanding ensemble section following the solos. That was Afternoon in Paris, John Lewis's composition arranged by Mark Taylor. Next up is uh, uh, that, and that's a grade three, by the way. And this next one is a, a, I we would kind of characterize as a three and a half. Uh, it's called Pocono Get Down by Rick Hirsch. And this is a, a New Orleans second line feel like uh, like Alligator Alley earlier. Uh, but this is follows a 24 bar blues. And it fe also features a front line of baritone sax and trumpet and optional guitar. Anyone can solo on this the way that the chart is set up because it's it's an F blues. Rick recorded this with his his big old band in, uh, in Central PA, uh, and it's a great recording. There's also a wonderful development section after the solos that we're not going to totally get to, um, but uh, this is a very fun to play chart, and uh, your your uh, medium level jazz ensemble students will really enjoy this one. Here's Pocono Get Down by Rick Hirsch. So that's called uh, that's called Giddy Up. I'm sorry, no, I got the wrong the wrong Rick Hirsch to Pocono Breakdown. Sorry, uh, Get Down rather. Sorry about that. Uh, and that's the uh, uh, great great feel there for uh, for your uh, medium advanced ensemble or medium uh, ensemble. Next up is another medium, so three and a half grade four. This is called Running of the Bulls. Uh, Ted, maybe we could start this at 13 when I'm done instead of the beginning. Um, and uh, this is, uh, it starts with a rubato intro featuring piano and guitar and, and gradually adding bass. And, th uh, and, and then it settles into a samba groove. It has a easy, um, easy solo section. Uh, it's, it's a longer form solo section, but it's easy to, to kind of get the get, to get your uh, students to sink their teeth into. There's a drum solo that happens uh, at, after the solo section where the, the uh, drums are soloing over a vamp figure. And it's got an exciting recap of, of the main theme of the tune on the end. Here's the, this is in the uh, Kendor Music Doug Beach Threshold series. We hope you enjoy George Shutak and Doug's collaboration entitled The Running of the Bulls.
and you get the idea with that tune. It's, we've got a lot of catchy rhythms to it, uh, and it's a lot of a, a lot of fun to play, and it would be a great teaching tool for your students. Next up is the 702 Shuffle by Brett Zvechek, and this is from the same series. This is from the Doug Beach uh, Kendor Music Threshold series. So this was coming in at, at, at the medium level. It's a, this is a, 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 a 16 bar form. It's a blues variant. Uh, and um but then it, and the melody but then it's a 12 bar blues on the uh on the solo section great opener or closer for your for your medium level band here's 702 shuffle Very seriously swing and chart by Brad Zvechek, 702 Shuffle. Uh, our last title of the reading session is another Rick Hirsch tune. Uh, this is a medium advanced level, so it, this is we're we're pushing uh, grade four to five. Uh, this is from another one from his big old band uh, the, uh, and the recordings that they have done. Uh, he calls this a swing and hip hop groove. Uh, it's a, a very hip contrapuntal. Uh, uh, setting for for the jazz ensemble, lots lots of lots of different lines going on. The solos are over an eight bar vamp figure, and there's uh, there's more contrapuntal writing later on in the tune, uh, and a great development section after the second solo section. But I think you're really going to dig this. Here's Rick's tune entitled "Giddy Up."
great lines, great writing, cool harmonies. That's got it all. Giddy Up by Rick Hirsch. All right, Mike, that was a wonderful presentation of some of the great jazz charts that are out there. <clears throat> Can't thank you enough for your insights into all the charts as well. Um, we appreciate you sharing all this great music with us today. And before we wrap up, uh, just a couple of reminders. Be sure to download the certificate of attendance linked. It's in the chat in Whova, and it's there for every live session, by the way. Uh, we have also created a short survey for each session. So please click the rate session button to take just two minutes to let us know how we did. And this concludes our final session for today, but the community rooms open 24-7. If you would like to continue uh, mingling with colleagues, so join us, join the conversation. Thanks for coming, everyone. And uh, we want to just say thank you so much for being here. And Mike, take care. You too, Ted. Thanks, everybody, for being here. Lots of sessions right. tomorrow. All right. Bye-bye.